Hey, it's your old pal Lucid Stew again. This time we're going to talk about thermo reporting and walk through each of the new expanded thermometers. Let's get to it. First topic under gameplay memory is things. This is a measure of the numerical amount of stuff in a scene. What that amount is depends on what you put into a scene because different types of things are weighted differently. So for instance, if you use only sculpts, you will hit the thing limit with 10,575. If you only use node gadgets, the limit is 16,382. While we're on the subject, I'm excited to announce more definitive information about groups. Groups cost almost exactly half as much as a sculpt, and stacking groups does not affect cost. Assuming you group two sculpts, then group that group with another sculpt and continue as far as you can, your group limit is about 6,900. None of these limits overlap, it's all in one pile, so it's not like you can have 10,575 sculpts and 16,382 nodes. However, since nodes cost less than sculpts and the actual thing limit is somewhere between 10,575 and 10,576 sculpts, you can fit 10,574 sculpts and three nodes into a scene. The unique stamped element limit is 256. This is not the limit of the amount of unique things you can have in a scene, but rather a limit on the amount of elements you can import into it. If you create things inside the scene, those do not count toward this limit. Interestingly, it doesn't seem to matter what an element consists of, it will count as one toward this limit. So it may be multiple sculptures and or paintings and count as one element, Given the typical graphics cost of a sculpture, odds are you won't need to worry about this limit. It's possible the case may be different with paintings, but still unlikely. I mentioned earlier different types of things are weighted differently. Doorways are an extreme example, so much so that they have their own meter. There is a hard limit of 20 doorways for each scene. For connectors, there is a supposed limit of 1,024. You can see from the description that puppets have a lot of connectors. Let's count them. Turns out they have 19. This would lead us to the logical conclusion that the most puppets we can have in a scene is 53, since 10,024 divided by 19 is less than 54. But you can actually have 56, and that yields 1,064 connectors. But that is still not the most connectors you can have in a scene. If you remove the hand and foot connectors from a puppet, you now have 15 connectors, and you can squeeze 73 of those into a scene. That is 1,095 connectors. If you very simply put connectors into a scene between two sculpts, the most you can have is 1,024. Different combinations of puppets and plain connectors will yield different results. More on puppets and limits in this regard, you have hard limits and you have soft limits. With the hard limits, you can't save the scene. With soft limits, you get a warning and things start to not function as they should. There is a hard limit of 56 regular puppets in a scene, for instance, but there is a soft limit of 30 after which you hit a raycast limit because presumably the internal construction of puppets uses laser scopes for procedural animation. Similarly, if you try to join 1,024 pairs of sculpts with a connector, you will be under the hard limit for connectors, but you will be over the soft limit for movable objects, which is exceeded with 432 pairs. Wires in animation is a difficult one to document because there are hidden connections between some objects. What I did to try to measure this is take a controller sensor and wire 38 of its outputs to a node. I was able to duplicate this 383 times before connections stop being connected. That's 14,554 wires. Interestingly, I was below the thermal limit for wires. Thermal was 96% at that point. Along the way, I hit soft limits for simultaneous wires drawn, which was about 1,617. I also hit the soft limit for components drawn, which was about 425. 
With just single value wires, I maxed out around 16,250. I tried the same thing with eight value fat wires and my limit there was 15,000. So it's hard to tell exactly what's happening there, but the most important part I think is that you lose the ability to make connections before you hit the thermal limit. This was the case with every experiment I tried. It looks like when you keyframe something, it generates an, in, an invisible wire between the keyframe and the thing you're changing, and the results are similar. Same thing with Action Recorder. Also with Action Recorder, I believe the amount of changes to a slider or button you can record is 90. Under graphics memory, there are five measures. The first is sculpture data. This is a measure of all the stuff I talked about in my graphics thermo series. This is essentially a measure of the amount of flex being used in a scene to cover the surface area of your sculptures. As such, it is ostensibly a measure of how large, how tight, and how complex your scene sculpture surfaces are. Shared memory is a block of memory presumably larger than each of the individual memory limits. From messing with this, it seems to be dominated by sculptures and paintings. I had a difficult time getting the animation and audio metrics to register more than a few percent, and that was trying. That said, if you really try to add sound and animation to every facet of a full-length game, then those percentages will probably start factoring in. Those are just things I couldn't affect over the course of simple experiments. Three months of game development is a different issue. The paint metric is to paint what the sculpture data metric is to sculptures. The limit depends on the uniqueness of paintings, just like how only unique sculptures add to sculpture data. It appears that the painting cost of a painting is a measure of the amount of flex in that unique painting. Being that we're working with large numbers, it would take a long time to actually count them, and there would likely be counting errors anyway, so I approximated. Based on a fairly accurately enumerated amount of 25,000 flex at 5% cost, I'm estimating the flex limit within a unique painting to be 500,000. Each painting is a thing, and the thing limit for paintings is 10,854, which yields a theoretical limit of about 5 billion flex in a scene. Before you get too excited, there is a painting flex draw limit and that fluctuates between about 2 and 4 million, depending on overlap. By the way, this now works differently than it used to. There is no longer a hard limit. You can exceed 100% graphics thermo with paint, thereby limiting your ability to save while that condition exists. Also, assuming paint is your highest sub-percentage of graphics, you will see that percentage rise as you add unique paintings it will no longer explode to 100% when you go one fleck over the line. You may have noticed when changing the physics accuracy of an object, it fills up with a bunch of spheres to denote its physics bounding properties. The more spheres in there, the more accurate the physics. This is what is measured by sculpture physical shape. I would say that normally you won't concern yourself with this because usually your sculpture data cost will be higher. That is based on experiments I did with typical scene type sculptures at the highest physics setting. However, there is an exception to that. That happens when your physics is high and your shapes are fuzzy. So let's say you had a scene where you were simulating 100 different shaped cotton balls bouncing around. This might be an issue. Like sculpture detail, this is not Cumulative across copies, you pay the price once when you place a unique object in the scene. And beyond that, before this metric becomes an issue, you will almost surely hit the physics soft limit where your movable objects stop working properly. I'd say out of the metrics we've looked at so far, you'll probably contend with this one the least. The sculptures metric is kind of like unique stamped elements, but includes elements that have been created in that scene. This is another number that is fairly high and would have taken a while to count to the one, so I approximated. The limit here is about 1800. I based that on making unique sculptures until I reached 10%. That ticked over to 11 at 184, which would indicate our ceiling value had exceeded 10. 
That said, unless you're dealing with extremely low thermo objects to begin with, you'll probably never run into this. On top of that, the amount of time involved in producing 1800 unique sculptures isn't trivial, so I think this is another one you're unlikely to run into. The audio benchmarks are probably the most difficult to quantify because there are no strict amounts expressed in the descriptions. Because of the way Dreams Audio currently works, there is no way of knowing how long a sound is without first downloading and looking at it in slice mapped view. When you're dealing with unique sounds the way the audio metrics do, that would take forever, so I did not do this. These are all approximates. So I've estimated by downloading a bunch of unique sounds. Some I've estimated by recording a bunch of unique sounds. The first is audio memory. Audio memory is the total memory that you can consume with audio. I reached an amount of 2% after recording 6.5 minutes of audio in 15 second chunks. This would indicate a total limit of about 3.5 hours of audio. It looks like when audio memory is maxed out, it will consume 10% of the shared memory metric found under the graphics thermo. With that same information, we can decipher audio download size. This is a limit on sounds not produced by Media Molecule. Since all of the sounds in this test were recorded by me, they all apply. I hit 5% after recording 4.5 minutes, which indicates that you can record and or import sounds from others to the tune of about 90 minutes. This also means you're able to utilize about 2 hours worth of Media Molecule sounds without affecting this metric. Also, to be clear, we are differentiating here between sounds and music produced using the music tools. Music uses sounds and also can consume quite a bit of gameplay. I'm talking about sounds only here. The impact of music on Thermo is a combination of unique sounds and the amount of notes in the composition. Lastly, unique sounds limit. Self-explanatory. I dropped unique sounds into a scene until the metric went up. I did this until I surpassed 4% with 83 unique sounds. 82 times 25 is 2050, so approximating this limit at 2000, and I seriously doubt too many people will hit that. So in this video we went over an exhaustive amount of information pertaining to thermo reporting and the new expanded thermo displays. I learned a lot looking into this more deeply, I hope you did too. I still want to talk about heat maps, more coming from the existing series I have going and I'm hoping to start a new one taking a close look at all aspects of the various menus in edit mode and reaching into nooks and crannies you may not have explored. But that's all for now, until next time, I'll see you in the Dreamiverse.